Excuse me, kids. You, you guys got to get, get back into school. <laughs> Growing up in Philadelphia, there wasn't this community policing concept in terms of police getting out and working in communities. You know, I'd grown up in neighborhoods where there were gangs that were prevalent. And so when the police came in, they came in to make arrest. I was definitely afraid of the police when I was a kid. When I came to Rochester, I had an opportunity to see how officers are connected to the community. This is a historical area for most Rochesterians. Overall, it's a pretty good neighborhood to live in. It also has had its share of tragedies. Last summer, you know, three people lost their lives in a drive-by shooting. But if you look, you'll see it's directly across the street from a school. You know, how significant is that? What's wrong, man? Are you okay? What time do you have school today? Probably eight. Yo, know, I try to make sure he comes to school. I actually buy him with donuts. I don't know like that. You know, whatever it takes to get him to school. I won! Physical exercise, right? You think I need a little bit of that? Yes. Watch it. <laughs> My role as a school resource officer is to navigate the student into an area where they feel safe. It's so significant that they know that I'm not here to hurt them. I'm not here to trigger a, a past trauma, especially because of the way that the police image is cast across the country right now. There's this perception that school resource officers are contributing to some level of incarceration or harsh penalties. I'm not here to put kids in handcuffs. That's not Moses. You know, Moses is here to help you. The effects of trauma plays heavily on their brains. Oftentimes, they react out of that fear, that anger, that trauma, whatever it might be. How are we trained to deal with them? How you train is how you respond. I was called to a classroom for a student who wouldn't leave the classroom as was requested by the teacher. He had his head on his desk, his hoodie over his head, so what I did was, I got close enough to his ear. And what I said to him, that only he and I could hear, is I said, son, I want you to do me a favor. I want to get you out of here. Can you please get your stuff, pick up your head, and follow me out of the classroom? 6'3", African-American male, hood still on his head. He's walking down the hall, and he's walking kind of soft. And so I can identify there's something going on. I don't know really what's going on with this kid, but something's going on. He fell on the floor in the middle of the hallway, just he and I in the hallway together. And he starts, he, almost in a fetal position, curls up and starts to cry right into the, in the hallway, uncontrollably. I lean over t on him, and I put my hand on his shoulder, and I ask him again, son, what's wrong? And what he begins to tell me was that he had found out when he got to school that Monday morning that his best friend was shot and killed. My relationship with that kid was a relationship that was already built on trust was a relationship that was already built on credibility that Officer Moses Robinson is not here to hurt me.
for me, one of the things that provides me with a, a tremendous amount of empathy for the kids is knowing that I am them, or I was them. My family, my sisters and brothers, we ended up in foster homes. And I'll never forget, like, sitting there on these stairs wondering, you know, where's my family? Who's gonna come and visit me? Um, feeling alone. For me, realizing that I can make a difference inside of law enforcement was, was, was the turning point. Check. Being a school resource officer, the key word is resource. We are looking to be utilized as a resource in so many different areas. You see somebody discriminate against another person just because they're different, just because their size is different, or just because they have a different sexual orientation, then who will stand up for those people who are afraid to stand up for themselves? They try to bring you down, try to manipulate you. We're talking about peer pressure. Who's willing to take the risk to say, don't treat her like that, that's wrong? We have children here for a certain period of time, but then they leave the school. What resources do we have that reach outside the school into the community. Welcome, good to see you. Where are we meeting? We work with community agencies, organizations that work with and connect with youth, several organizations from the business community. Uh, most of something that we talked about doing with the kids was really getting them to offices in town uh, where they could see what goes on in offices and basically to help develop opportunities. We can build that program around the curriculum as well as some of the things that Dave talked about. It's about community rehabilitation. We're looking at training school resource officers prior to them being placed in schools. And part of that training is understanding brain development, is understanding or being uh, trauma-informed, having a trauma lens. You'll see something happening with youth, but they don't really connect why they're acting the way they're acting, why they're acting out. We can work together to bring kids back and lift them up. We all close to him. We everybody talks to him. We're like, Uncle, Uncle Moses. You need somebody there to talk to sometimes. Not only does he go beyond the duties inside the school, also outside the school. He has a card. His cell number is on it. And trust me, she called me last week like 10 o'clock at night. Officer Moses is like a father figure to me. I can talk to him about anything. My dad, right now, he's he's just getting out of jail in, what, March? And if I'm going through something, I can talk to him about anything. <laughs> Peace be with you. You can't just walk by and not greet him. You gotta say good morning or or something, because when you say good morning, it's like saying thank you for being here. You know, the image of police officers, you know, I wanted to change that. I wanted to be that type of officer people will say, that's a good guy, I like him. You know, there's always work to be done. There's always, you know, we don't always get it, but we have to work towards getting it. And I think that's the key.